In today's video, we have a lot of NHL trade rumors and news around the league to discuss. In the trade rumors section, we're looking at the Montreal Canadiens, Boston Bruins, New York Islanders, and Buffalo Sabres. We have other news regarding the Ottawa Senators' sale, off-season news regarding Artemi Panarin signing in Boston, and some more uh, unfortunate news NHL's lost another legend. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover here today. First, I want to get caught up, of course, back in the regular recording studios. Most of you have been probably following along. If you watch the channel regularly, you know the last uh, five, six days I've been away on vacation. Uh, getting uh, There were some pre-recorded videos done uh, right here. And then, of course, there were some from the road in different locations across uh, Nova Scotia where I was visiting the past week. Um, but there have been a couple of unfortunate, sad stories. I did get some of it out on in uh, YouTube short content form but nothing in a longer form video so of course a few days back we get the sad news that Leafs prospect Rody Namirov had sadly passed away um, obviously he's been, uh, been battling a brain tumor for I think about two years um, certainly a real sad story a uh, young man was you know 15th overall pick just a few years ago in the draft had a real promising future um, and you know the last I had heard anything was just back a few weeks ago uh, when there was, I think it was his KHL coach for the team that he was a part of, and they were optimistic that he'd be able to resume playing at some point. And obviously, um, you know, things went in a completely different direction here. And unfortunately, he's passed away at a very young age, only in his early 20s. So that's incredibly sad. And then uh, afterwards, we found out that the NHL's lost another legend, uh, former Maple Leaf legendary player Bobby Bond, a hard hitting defenseman, uh, passed away at age 86. Now, of course, he started playing in the 50s. The 56 57 season was where he uh, got started, and he was a part of the last Leafs team to hoist the Stanley Cup in 1967. That's how long it's it's been. It's, it's kind of, you know, when you think about it like that, and that we just lost a legendary player at age 86, who was one of the last Leaf players to hoist the Cup. Certainly, they're overdue for a win. Um, you know, he played 964 games across the NHL, put up 224 points. Wasn't, like I said, on a more of an offensive role. He's a hard-hitting uh, defenseman. In retirement, he was even, uh, you know, well-known as being a farmer and a Tim Horton franchise owner. Obviously, Tim Horton himself played for the Leafs before getting into his uh, legendary Canadian business that he started as well. Uh, did a lot of coaching at the younger levels as well. So, Bobby Bond was certainly a well recognizable figure in hockey especially in Leafs uh, uh, history so I certainly want to acknowledge his passing at age 86 and offer condolences to friends and family anybody impacted by uh, his untimely death as well um, some other news around the league some more positive stories that we're following the Ottawa Senators uh, are getting closer to getting new ownership officially in place uh, pending new owner Michael Anlauer is set to take over the team likely by the end of August or early September is how things are looking the latest reports in the Ottawa Sun from Bruce Garriock indicate that there's a meeting this week between Ann Lauer and NHL where he's meeting with the executive committee. Uh, so it's expected, of course, they need approval from that committee first. And then, as long as everything goes well, and it's expected to, that the next stage is that Batman would have to call a, uh, a conference call, league wide vote. So all the owners or governors that are representing the owners would have to be on the call. They'd have to do a vote. You need two thirds of the vote to uh, be successful in uh, having everything pass and and uh, gain ownership it's expected to be unanimous however so it's more of a formality um so that's all good news like so uh and lauer's uh, partners all of his partners have to be vetted by the nhl as well and i believe they're in the process of doing that uh several different people are invested within the team as well uh including jeff york uh, brother of former senator player uh jason york uh and of course jeff york of course uh, involved with farm boy uh it's his business and then he has i think there's 20 other local investors tied up within the group that he brought together from the local aspect of things uh, and then of course there's several other uh, different uh, investors too so they're all in the process of being vetted apparently Ann Lauer is told all of them to have their funds ready by August 31st and if not by the end of August but in the first little bit of September the deal is expected to close now it's also expected that once that closing is official and Ann Lauer has full control that Daniel Alfredson shortly thereafter is expected to take a role with the franchise and uh, resume his time back as an Ottawa Senator again, hopefully this time for good. Uh, Sens, uh, I'm sure Sens fans have been wanting Alfredson back in the fold here. I think largely when he came back before, I think he, it was only I think one, one season. He didn't stay long, and I think a lot of it just he had a difficult time working with former owner Eugene Melnick. 
Hopefully things go much better for him this time around. Right now it's looking like it's probably going to be a role in player development, but I wouldn't be surprised if that is quickly expanded into you know, either being um, an advisor type role to uh, the, you know, the the president or GM, depending if there's any changes in those roles in the coming weeks and months ahead as well. I'm not sure if his role will expand too much while Pierre Dorian is GM. Not that he would have a lot of say in it, but I wouldn't. I think uh, it might be more likely that he works closer with whoever maybe is the next person to lead the team. At least that would be my guess, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure what his relationship with, with uh, Pierre is like. Uh, Cy Leader, the former president of business operations, also is rumored to be returning as well. He was involved with the team from its um, from its inception back in the 90s, so uh, it'd be great to have him back in the mix as well. He certainly had lots of experience when it comes to the business side of things, um, you know, when it comes to getting new arenas. like uh, He's got a ton of experience in that regard, so I think uh, he'd be a great asset to have back in the mix as well. New York Rangers winger Timmy Panarin has gotten himself in a little bit of hot water back home in Russia. Apparently, he's been fined in Russia for firing uh, a, a gun in an undesignated zone is what the report said. Uh, apparently, he fired several shots, but it's his first offense, so it's only a fine, and his weapon was confiscated. For his sake, it doesn't amount to anything. Certainly, you know, a situation we want to keep an eye on, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be, you know, too much of an issue for him. So I certainly hope for his sake that, you know, nothing more comes from this. Now, we also have a signing today as well, and on Boston Bruins have signed prospect player and former Harvard Crimson player, centerman John Farinacci. Uh, he gets a two-year entry-level contract, so it's a two-year deal because he's 22 years old. So once you're obviously certain a little bit older than your traditional rookie, uh, the uh, ELC time frames are a little bit different. You can do a one year as well uh, if they're even older than that. Uh, he was originally a 2019 draft selection of the Arizona Coyotes, chose to play in college for at least three years, uh, did not sign, became a free agent. And is now a member of the Bruins. Obviously, Harvard, uh, you know, certainly in that same neck of the woods as the Bruins. So he kind of gets to stay in the same area. I don't know if that was a preference of his or what have you, but uh, Farinacci looks to be a pretty decent prospect, a little bit more mature at 22 years old, playing against men in college. So, you know, I don't know if he'll make the jump to the NHL. Uh, certainly, with having guys like Bergeron and Krejci recently retire, will, you know, create more opportunity for some of the younger Bruins in the organization who play center. So it's unclear if he can make the jump to the NHL. More likely starts in the American Hawks League, but still a decent prospect to get under contract here for Boston. Also, an interesting story from Mark Stone of the Vegas Golden Knights. Of course, the Stanley Cup champions. He recently had his day with the Stanley Cup uh, back home in Manitoba. Uh, he made an appearance recently on the Pat McAfee show. Uh, and actually, we learned something, at least that I, I wasn't aware of. I don't know if a lot of people were, but apparently in the final game of the Stanley Cup final, when they clinched the Stanley Cup victory, Mark Stone suffered a fractured wrist. Of course, in that game, he also scored a hat trick and was a huge part of winning that game and capturing the Stanley Cup. Um, but of course, that's something we didn't really know. I can't really pinpoint exactly what happened, but certainly uh, it'd be interesting to go back and watch and see if we can kind of maybe narrow down on the footage what um, went down. But needless to say, even though he had a fractured wrist, he had a will of a game and certainly probably wasn't feeling any pain afterwards considering all things. But uh, he also did reveal that the injury was... Uh, healing and will be ready to go come training camp and it won't hold him back from missing any time to start the season but another a little interesting tidbit of information there on the trade front i want to start with the arizona coyotes uh, we got word from coyotes beat reporter craig morgan that one of their prospects wants out and that is former draft pick jan jenick now he's seeking a trade he's only 22 years old uh, he's come over he's a pending rfa he's completed his entry-level contract he was a third rounder from the czech republic in 2018 uh, he's had some pretty solid american hockey league stats the last couple of years but has seen very limited time in the nhl so he would like to be moved and uh, get a better opportunity to continue his career elsewhere now obviously in a case like jenick without having anything established at the nhl third round pick five years ago you're you're not going to be getting much of a return I, mean, I know the coyotes have proven time and time again here that they'll take these requests for trades and they'll take their good old time if they feel like they need to uh, look at jacob chicker and how long that was drawn out not going to say that this is going to do the same thing or not i think if bill armstrong finds a deal that he's happy with he'll make the trade but if he's not, then he won't. It's just that simple. He's proven that again. But uh, we do know the Coyotes have added more 
quality NHL players uh, that have more experience this year. So it's going to make it even more difficult for him to crack the forward group and get more NHL time this year. So, I mean, he's 22. He'll be 23 soon enough. Um, I can see that there must be another prospect around the league, for example, that might be in a similar predicament that would like a fresh start that they could probably swap with. So we'll see. But certainly keep a look uh, look out here for Jan Janik, Coyote's prospect, to hopefully, in his case, get moved sooner than later so he can get a fresh start and uh, you know get on with his career hopefully somewhere else. Uh, in Buffalo, uh, we have a word from Sabres reporter Lance Lazowski that uh, Sabres defenseman Jacob Bryson is likely going to be or could be at least an odd man out in Buffalo on the blue line and could be a trade candidate that we see uh, discussed in the rumor mill and possibly move sometime before either the start of the season during camp or what have you. Uh, obviously, the Sabres added a few veterans on their blue line this past offseason, including Eric Johnson, Connor Clifton. Uh, they certainly have some of the younger players playing ahead of them. Uh, clearly, like Darlene Power, uh, you know, obviously in the mix there, Samuelson, you know, Yoko Hyrule was there. So it kind of makes uh, Bryson probably your uh, your odd man out, like you know your number seven guy. They 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 could arguably have seven or eight players there who could take a spot. Uh, he's making one point eight five million as well, which would give them some salary cap flexibility. I know there's definitely teams around the league looking for D. Most of those teams are play or teams that uh, have a little bit of room or are teams that are currently going through a bit of a rebuild or lower in the standings based on last year. So hard to say where he could end up, but not a given he goes. I mean, it's also possible that the Sabres could put him on waivers too, but I would suspect they would probably be able to get a somewhat of a return, at least even if it's not huge, uh, to get something back rather than put him on waivers before they have to be uh, ready to roll for the opening night. Uh, in Boston too, there's more... Uh, speculation because this has come up before, but I've seen new articles today suggesting that uh, Jean Gabriel Pajot, the New York Islanders, may be a target for them. Now that they know 100% that David Krejci's not returning, of course, the Pajot rumors were speculating earlier in the offseason before Bergeron or Krejci both officially announced their retirement. Now, it's, uh, the Bruins probably knew a bit of a head uh, start here ahead of time than most of us did, I'm sure, but um, you know, this was. Before that was official, but it was based on the idea that that was likely going to happen. Uh, Pajo was not really a number one center. He, I'm not even sure he's a number two. To me, he's a really good number three. But he's making, uh, you know, five million bucks a year, which is a lot for a number three. So clearly, teams that I think if they're going to acquire him would probably want to try to get him more into a. A number two a spot like play more of a top six role to earn that contract more because we haven't seen the growth in the salary cap in the last few years like they were likely expecting on Long Island and many other teams around the league when that was signed. Um, you know, he's you know, pretty steady, you know, 40 point, 40, 45 point guy, good two way player. That's why another third line role for the most teams is what kind of suits him best. I mean, to be honest, he could be. You're not going to replace Patrice Bergeron. It's just that simple. So I don't want to use the word Bergeron replacement because that just doesn't seem fair. Um, but it also puts way too much pressure on the player coming in to be that guy, uh, which I don't think is justified here. But, you know, in case of Pajo, he could play a top six role so that they had a good two-way centerman who could, you know, hopefully provide something close to what Bergeron did. Um, you know, Pacho is a guy who's been recognized as being a solid two-way centerman. Doesn't get a lot of attention when it comes to the Selkie Trophy, of course. Nothing anywhere close to what Bergeron did, but he does get some recognition, some votes. So we'll see. But we've talked about before, uh, I suspect if the Islanders were to pull that uh, trigger on that kind of deal, they're probably going to ask for Jake DeBrusque. I don't know that the Bruins are going to want to trade DeBrusque for Pacho. I think they'd have interest in Pacho, but from a cap perspective, I mean... You know, obviously money would have to go out. Um, it's just difficult to see. Like, that's the problem right now is the Bruins still have solid goaltending. They have a good blue line. They do have some pretty good depth on the wings, but the center position is weak, or at least it's been weakened dramatically. Uh, you know, we'll see if some of these guys can maybe surprise us and step up. But right now you're looking at Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka, Morgan Geeky kind of leading the way here. You're one, two, three down the middle. And, uh, you know, that's you don't really have a, a true number one you know, Zaka could be a number two. We don't like, I don't know. Like he's going to have an elevator role and we just it needs, we need to see how he does, I guess. But um, I'm, I'm not completely sold. This as a perfect solution just because again, I can see Pajo making sense for Boston. I don't know that the, they're going to want to give the return that Lou Lamarillo is going to want. 
And because of that, I don't know that it's going to be able to come together. But there's some more talk that there's interest there. We'll see if it goes anywhere. Uh, and, of course, in Montreal, uh, Kent Hughes has made, uh, obviously, some comments after making the Jeff Petrie trade yesterday. Uh, of course, Jeff Petrie went to Detroit uh, for a fourth-rounder and young defenseman, Gustav uh, Lidstrom. Now, in this uh, press conference, he also made comments about Paul Byron. Uh, they were asked about him. Byron is expected to, to not play and to likely announce retirement sometime before the season starts. It's also expected that it's possible he could take on um, an off-ice role with the Canadians as well. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he'll do. I think it might be something in player development, but not not certain on that. Um, but uh, that's the update on Byron. But he's also made mention, and this came from Renaud Lavoie as well, uh, TBS Sports today saying that uh, apparently Ken Hughes has reached out to Casey DeSmith and asked him to be patient uh, that they you know might be moving him again so of course just like Petrie we knew that there was a good possibility that can happen we already knew this was possible as well but according to Renault Lavoie he makes mention that the team is open to making other moves within the goaltending situation within the team so it's not a given that DeSmith is flipped uh, and really, if you look at the goaltending situation, to me, if there if there's any chance they keep Casey to Smith, to me that means they move Jake Allen. I don't think they move Samuel Montembeau, and I don't think that they move Caden Primo. I mean, I guess even if they move Primo, that still creates a logjam at the NHL level. So to me, I think now the only problem is is Jake has some trade protection in his contract, whereas um, you know De Smith doesn't. So it would probably and he's also De Smith's also making less money. He's younger. I, I, I think the odds of Casey DeSmith getting traded over Jake Allen are significant. But if a team likes Jake Allen more and they offer the Canadians the right deal, that's possible Casey DeSmith can stay. But like I said, there's other factors there. Jake's an older goaltender coming off a bit of a down season, and he's making more money and has some trade protection in his contract. All indications from what I know that he really likes it in Montreal. I think from a family perspective, it works really well for him. I would suspect that if he's able to block a trade, he probably would. So we'll see what happens. But let me know what you think the Montreal Canadiens do in terms of their goaltending. Is the Smith going to be flipped? To me, it makes more sense. I think they get a better return. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. Uh, no clear-cut landing spot exactly just yet, though, where he may end up. There's certainly a few teams around the league looking at goaltending. But at this point, we haven't heard any uh, pure speculation on where um, he might be going or teams that might have been acquiring with Ken Hughes on a potential trade. So, yeah, that's your news for today. Said back in the studio, you get back to re- regular, uh, normal content from my normal location here uh, for the number of days ahead. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. 